Welcome Exchange program uh, delivers a series of creative events uh, that focus on bringing community together, most specifically Indigenous communities, together with newcomers to share skills, culture, and create a welcoming opportunity for newcomers as they arrive in Victoria. We very much believe uh, that true settlement um, sh should only occur with the blessing of First Nations. Um, the early settlers to this land were not respectful of First Nations. Uh, they didn't uh, have uh, an approach that was welcoming um, or that was inclusive. Um, and we want to change that narrative. So one of the goals of this program is to ensure that any kind of welcome event uh, that is hosted includes and is developed by First Nations according to their cultural background and their traditions. And we think that that sets the newcomer off on a really good footing in their new community and allows them to immediately participate in reconciliation. We also believe as a goal um, that developing relationships within communities is essential uh, for a good experience for a newcomer. We also see it as an opportunity to bring employers to the table. Again, it's a relaxed opportunity to meet and greet and build relationships and bonds. And we know that employers who engage at a relational uh, level with newcomers are more likely to give them a job. So the key features are events. One of the events is a cultural exchange, which will typically involve a local First Nation working on a traditional skill. It could be cuisine, it could be beading, could be carving, uh, and at the same time bringing in uh, newcomers and allowing them to show some of their cultures um, and some of their traditional skills. And it's remarkable how often they cross over and, and conversations begin and relationships start. And it's a, it's a really, even without good language skills, like the fact that you're using your hands together and building or creating something is a really opening and welcoming experience. Uh, I'm a Northwest Coast artist. I practice Clinket style art. So I do uh, lots of carving. Uh, pro projects from small pendants to totem poles and everything in between. We just recently had a uh, wonderful workshop and wonderful exchange with the Ukrainian uh, organization here in Victoria. And we used, uh, we asked a, a young artist named Dylan Thomas, who's Coast Salish, she's from here in the community of Songhees. And he and another professional artist from Ukraine um, led, co-led a workshop together. Uh, for that exchange to happen. And what it really is, is when you start actually working in uh, unison with other cultures, you'll find similarities. You'll find things that are, are uh, you might be on the other side of the world, but they actually uh, are very similar to the, the culture that you're representing from the community you're from. And you find commonalities in it, and it makes the workshop uh, itself go really well. And I think through the, the work of artwork, uh, the more people that understand uh, Northwest Coast art or other indigenous forms of artwork, they'll have a better understanding of who we are and where we're from and what we do. And no better way than doing the uh, We Exchange or the We program that we do here at the foundation. It's really about cultural sharing and sharing what I know for you to make you feel comfortable and welcome in the, the culture. And also a really great way to introduce people to the communities. Our program is innovative and unique um, because it's really f from meeting where the community's at. So, you know, our program, uh, we work with different artists like Christy Crawford and James Crawford from Hadigwai, uh, Dylan Thomas, um, Amanda Hugon, who's a Stolo Nation artist from Chilliwack area. Um, we, we get them to develop their own way of being and presenting the cultural workshops they put on. It's not something that we've developed. There's a book, this is what you need to do and this is what you need to share. Um, they share what they know from their own nations. Um, the perspective is uh, unique to the individuals and they're unique to those communities. Um, so when it comes to 
cultural sharing, I think you get a little bit of a different uh, knowledge from each of the places that we go to. We also have events focused on the needs of the newcomer, which in many cases will be employment. A number of the newcomers who have arrived in Vancouver Island really want work. And for them, we recognize that they really want connections to employers. So we will have an event that hosts a number of employers in the area that are pre-vetted, um, that we know are open and interested uh, in uh, hiring newcomers despite, a poten despite potential language barriers that may exist. So we look at different ways to overcome those barriers and make sure that, that the newcomers have that opportunity to get that job if that's what they most desperately need. Based on our project, uh, we hold different sessions with employers and newcomers as a potential employee. Um, so at first it could be a big job fair when we invite uh, at least 10 employers and uh, more than 50, 60 employees. Uh, one of our job fair was just specifically for any newcomers. So, and we invite a lot of uh, employers from the construction industry. Just focus on somebody who wants to get this uh, job there. But uh, another our job fair was uh, looking for people who wants to get any jobs. So we invite people, invite employers from the hospitality, healthcare, uh, security. And uh, based on our experience, we have uh, really successful stories that people after our job fairs uh, got a job and right now uh, continue working for this company. Those are our two main events. We've also structured smaller mini events focused on language, for example. We don't do language training, but we have the opportunity to do communications uh, and we'll host a number of individuals to come in and, and, and just practice talking in English. Um, we also have, uh, with our workshops, again, focusing always on the needs of the newcomers that we're working with, we will set up specific workshops for such things as immigration procedures or what are what is your your opportunity to stay in Canada if you're here on a QIT visa if you're Ukrainian. Um, it really is very much focused on what individuals need. When we talked uh, with our clients and first we should understand what really he she they need here. So somebody ask for employment supports. Another one ask about transportation, interpretation services, or childcare. Because for someone, for parents who came with uh, some children, yeah. So where, how we can attend the, your job fair if we don't have no one who can help us with uh, our children? Also, it could be clothing, it could be food, social connection professional networking and so on. So it's a lot, long list. So we ask them at first. Sometimes I see that our clients don't want to share some like, information. I'm not, I'm, everything okay with me. But then when you just started ask more and more politely and with different slides, he, he, they said, oh yes, we need this and this and this. So that's why uh, need assessment help us understand the uh, situation of our clients. Yeah? So we understand this uh, person as a person first, not like a client, a person. What, what do you really need here? So we also cooperate with uh, some organization who helps our client with closing for free. We also cooperate with volunteers who help us with interpretation services. We cooperate with our settlement service provider who help with English classes for somebody who wants to, to improve their English skills. We cooperate with different organizations who help with childcare services. Efficiency is earned when you bring the full or a, good, a goodly number of the community, the stakeholders that exist in that community, together in a room and allow people to have conversation and to meet and to, di to discuss things. I think it, that ability to um, ensure that multiple stakeholders are engaged at the same time 
in the process of welcoming and successfully integrating a newcomer into the community. I think that's very efficient. You're not going door to door looking for different things. Everybody comes to the table and we all work together like a small town to support the new, the new entrant into the town. I believe the most promising practice is that initial engagement with First Nations, not just to participate in workshops and in events, but to actually help us and show us how to develop welcoming events from the Indigenous perspective, using their traditions and cultures, and, and ensuring that they're leading when it comes to, to settlement events, and, and it's not us asking them to participate. I think that's a promising practice. Over the course of a year, we did six cultural sharing events and five employment connection events, which is over and above uh, our contracted uh, numbers, which were three cultural sharing events and one employment event. To measure the performance of Welcome Exchange, we use a variety of tools. We use uh, surveys, uh, focus groups, and then one-on-one -on -one interviews. Using these tools has allowed us to co-create our offerings with our participants to ensure that we're meeting the needs that they have and not just what we assume they have. So when we're initially planning out our next round of events and service offerings, we do an initial outreach. Typically we'll use a, a survey to find out what people in our community are looking for and then from there we will develop our next round of uh, events and service offerings based upon their feedback. Um, after events, we follow up to see if we have indeed uh, provided the types of services that our uh, clients and participants are looking for and uh, ensure that there was nothing that um, we didn't cover. You know, the, the feedback that we receive on our events is, is amazing. Um, people are really excited by our cultural sharing events. Um, they, you know, it's, it's it's thrilling actually to have people say I didn't recognize that I would be so similar to other communities around the world so seeing the through lines between different beading techniques that are used in uh, in First Nations creations compared to North African creations um, and having the the women bonding over their shared experiences and sharing um, over a video workshop the different techniques and, and getting excited about that. We've found that most of our participants are keen to learn about First Nation traditions in the area. Um, they are very interested in uh, meeting uh, local artists and knowledge keepers and have a real sense of um, deep understanding of what um, First Nations people have experienced for some as a result of what they may have experienced in home country. Um, so providing the, the hands-on workshops but also uh, the storytelling um, aspect has really risen to the forefront um, for us and um, as a result we are increasing our service offerings around the cultural sharing events so that people um, are able to have those experiences and learn more in a deeper and more connected way. Feedback from our First Nations partners or participants. Um, everybody that we've been connecting with has, has been so open and warm and welcoming, not only to us as uh, project managers, but also to our participants. They've you know, helped us uh, look at different ways to, to share about First Nations culture and um, you know, gain new senses of understanding of just how rich a culture that First Nations people have um, across the, uh, across Turtle Island, um, really. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been all really, really positive. People want to share. Um, people love, uh, love their culture on all sides and, and want to talk about it and inspire others. The employment opportunity events that we hold They've provided really great results for our participants. Uh, we receive feedback from a lot of people that um, have shared 
that we really helped them open doors to creating that professional network um, that if they hadn't uh, participated in a welcome exchange event, they might not have met uh, the employer who ultimately hired them. Um, it's, it's been really exciting to hear from our employers as well how, you know, having an opportunity to connect with newcomers in the area has, um, it, it's been good for them on so many different levels. Number one, they've been able to hire someone who has a, a variety of skills and experiences that make them a valuable part of their organization. Um, but they're learning more about other cultures and really feeling um, connected to, um, to newcomers and having them become a part of you know, the, the community here on the island, right? So it's, it's been really, really positive experience. Given that we are based on Vancouver Island, we've heard from organizations across the country. Um, so I've been in touch with people in Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba, even the Lower Mainland to, to talk about um, the predominantly the cultural sharing events um, and just how, what are those first steps that a person can take to, to meet with uh, First Nations community members to, to start a new project off in a good way. For other organizations that are looking to start up something similar, I invite them to reach out to us. Um, we'll share everything um, that, that we have put together. Always happy to have a, a coffee in person or virtually to talk through the different steps. Um, but keep an open mind and um, listen, to, listen to your stakeholders. People will tell you what they want. People will tell you what they need. So, so listen. I think connecting in with the community uh, and, and being there and showing up for, for the newcomer community but also for the First Nations community in your area is, is key. Um, one of the things that always sticks with me is um, something that our, uh, you know, my colleague Dean Heron shared, don't show up with ulterior motives when you're going to meet with different groups. Um, show up with an open mind, um, share your idea, and um, create things together from there. Where would other organizations start when sharing uh, cultural events? Uh, the first place I would go to is your, your First Nation community in uh, the area that you want to do the workshop with and approach their education and training programs. Um, and that way they can connect you to the people that are looking to uh, either do art or, or uh, do the training in the art or other programs that they have in the community. Um, my advice from, from that point of view as well is um, actually take their lead. Don't go in there and say this is the program we're going to do, this is how we're going to do it. Um, there's a trust that needs to be built in insofar as creating a program and it's created from the community outwards. Um, and they can bring their artists in, they can bring their elders in, they can bring their knowledge keepers in and, and if they need help developing a program or they have an idea of how to do it, um, from my point of view is that's where we can actually step in and develop the program together, um, but by taking their lead. Most of us in Canada are settlers. And we need to ensure that as we go forward and bring more settlers and newcomers to Canadian lands, that First Nations are at the door greeting and welcoming newcomers and taking control of the settlement process because we're all coming to live on their lands.